The Lafia Comprehensive School is a demonstration of our collective ambition to uplift the standard of living of all Nigerians. President Buhari in Nasarawa State inaugurates school for the physically challenged and other projects. Economic recovery and growth plan targets 15 million jobs as federal government institutes focus labs to accelerate job creation. Plus, correspondent examines impact of executive order five on local content development. Also tonight, Senate moves to ban tobacco companies from targeting minors in Nigeria. A very good evening to you and welcome to NTA Network News, reaching you live from the nation's capital, Abuja. I am Ruth Benamesia. Reading tonight from Lagos is Ademola Adeoye in Lagos and Jumai Yusuf from Meiduguri. President Muhammadu Buhari is reassuring Nigerians that the governing APC will remain unshaken in its resolve to curb corruption, secure lives and property, as well as ensure diversified economic growth for a greater Nigeria. He said in line with the philosophy of change issues critical to the nation's socio-economic development will continue to be identified for lasting solutions. The president was speaking at the inauguration of Comprehensive Special School in Lafia, executed by the Al Makura administration of Nasarawa State. State House correspondent Adamu Sambo was there. It was an emotional demonstration of care and deep concern for the people with disabilities by the Nasarawa State Government as President Muhammad Buhari inaugurated the Comprehensive Special School Lafia. People with disabilities, according to the Al Makura administration, do not need pity, but rather education, empowerment, and liberation from poverty. Hence, the construction of this school, first of its kind in Nigeria, to cater for all categories of people with disability. <laughs> President Muhammad Buhari, who expressed delight over the revolutionary transformation of Nasarawa State through prudent resource management by the Al Makura administration, said the Lafia Special School is a clear example of the APC government's inclusive policy of ensuring that no child is left behind. This is a well thought out initiative to give hope to a key segment of the society that has been ignored and neglected by the previous governments. We must help our disabled. He used the forum to reassure Nigerians that the federal government is working assiduously towards ensuring the restoration of peace and stability to all areas experiencing conflicts. We have deployed additional resources to all affected areas to maintain law and order. The attacks by suspected hardmen and other bandits will not be tolerated. I appeal to all Nigerians to restrain from refraining attacks. The security agencies have sent an instruction to arrest and prosecute any and all persons found with illegal arms. Governor Omar Utanku Al Makura, who thanked President Muhammad Buhari for the enhanced presence of the federal government in Nasarawa State, takes pride in the various people centered projects executed by his administration to make life better for the people of the state. The political ideology of the president, he said, has been the template adopted by his administration in the initiation and execution of the various projects and programs for Greater Nasarawa State. We in Nasarawa State will always be with you. In your economic and political aspirations, we have done it before, we shall always do it again. 
President Muhammad Buhari also flagged off the community health influencers, promoters, and services program chiefs and inaugurated the Kwandere Health Facility Lafia. He directed the Federal Ministry of Health to synergize with other states to roll out the program to enable the less privileged and the rural dwellers have access to health services. And to round off the visit, President Muhammad Buhari inaugurated the Karu International Market named after him. The ultra-modern commercial center has, among other facilities, over 3,000 lock-up stores, over 1,000 open stores, banking facilities, fire and police stations, and a magistrate court. From Karu in Nasarawa State, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Political leaders in the country have been tasked to embark on intensive mobilization and enlightenment campaign towards ensuring that all eligible Nigerians of voting age are registered to have a say in the nation's political leadership, direction and well-being. President Muhammadu Buhari made the call during a courtesy visit to the Emir of Lafia, Isa Mustafa Agwai, as part of his official visit to Nasarawa State. State House correspondent Adamu Sambo again reports. This is President Muhammad Buhari's first official visit to Nasarawa State, home of solid minerals since coming to power, and the reception accorded him by Governor Omaru Tanko Alamakura on arrival in Lafia was highly befitting. <laughs> show of love, affection, adoration, and solidarity was further demonstrated as the Nigerian leader headed for the Emir's palace in the heart of the metropolis to pay a courtesy visit. For the people including the Emir, Isa Mustafa Agwai, President Muhammad Buhari's visit is a homecoming of some sort as Nasarawa is considered his political laboratory where the highly cherished ideology and vision for a transparent, corrupt-free, accountable and indeed a change Nigeria enterprise took its root. There's no gain in saying that we in Nasarawa said pride ourselves as the pulp room upon which the Buhari changed mantra found a foothold in 2011, a development which made the Sweden change of 2015 possible. For us, therefore, this visit is a glorious homecoming, given that for President Muhammad Buhari, GCF at Nasarawa State is a home. The Emir, joined by other graded chiefs and title holders, was full of appreciation to the president for his administration's achievements in the fight against corruption, massive infrastructural development across Nigeria, and the economic diversification drive. He made a case for speedy completion of the Akubo booster station for improved power supply in the state, as well as the Federal Secretariat and the Central Bank of Nigeria Zonal Office Complex in Lafia. President Muhammad Buhari commended the people of Nasarawa State for their show of love and enthusiasm, as well as keeping faith with the change movement. I have been here so many times uh, when I'm looking for votes. Uh, and uh, the people in Nasarawa State remain consistent. And we thank God. We thank technology. Permanent voters card and check cards. I think you as leaders of your communities, please continue the political education. Let every Nigerian of age 18 and above to have his card. Let him keep it. Let him be educated that that is his right in his constituency as a member of this great country. When he votes, let us maintain his conscience. The president then proceeded to the city center where he performed his first task of inaugurating the state-of-the-art electronic library, state fire service headquarters, as well as the network of roads in Lafia, 
executed by the Almakura administration. From Lafia, Nasarawa State, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. And so for the people of Nasarawa State, the visit by President Buhari was epoch-making. And they displayed their love and solidarity for the president in appreciation of the accomplishment of his administration. Joshua Ojito reports. <laughs> A great moment for the people cutting across society's strata to meet the president and his entourage. Lafia was in a festive mood as all events were carried out peacefully. The people while describing the visit as one of the most auspicious moments in recent past appreciate President Buhari on the tax of nation building, particularly his uncommon fight against corruption and other development challenges facing Nigeria, as well as his love for the people. With his uh, projects, his programs and policies of anti-corruption and in fighting insurgency, it has made people to love him so much. We are very grateful. Can't, I can't express my happiness towards his coming. President Buhari, a promising man, he has kept his promise and today we have seen it. One important takeaway on the visit is the commitment by the president of sustaining federal government intervention in key economic and social sectors, including his pledge to commit the Lafia NIPP electricity substation and road projects in part of the state in line with the APC campaign promises. As the president returned to Abuja after a very busy schedule, there is a sense of fulfillment in the state that will remain indelible in time to come. In Lafia, Joshua Ojito, NTA News. Now I'm now being joined in the studio by Governor Al Makura of Nasarawa State to speak more on the president's visit to Nasarawa State. So, Mr. Governor, you're welcome to our studios. Thank you very much, and uh, nice to see you again, Ruth Benemisia. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, that was some feat you pulled there, moving the president all the way to your to your state. Well, congratulations. Thank you very much. It all worked out very well. Thank you very much. Excellent, Thank excellent. You. Now, how impactful would you say that that visit was on your people? What do they stand to gain? Well, thank you very much. Uh, like you rightly said uh, in the news, it is an epoch-making visit. Uh, one, because Mr. President means so much to the people of Nassau State. And since he assumed office as uh, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, uh, he had not, not, the, they had, had not, uh, not the opportunity to visit the state until now, mm. where it had always been his second home politically. So his coming to Nasarawa State is homecoming, and uh, it will re-energize the affinity and affection and commitment of the people of Nasarawa State to him and his administration. Secondly, part of the activities he has come to visit Nasarawa State for, particularly the commissioning of the comprehensive special school which is so very close to my heart, uh, is something that would go a long way in changing the, the narratives of disability generally and people living with disability. This visit will create tremendous amount of awareness and sensitization on the plight of people with disability. And it will give both people and institutions a clear idea of what it takes to appreciate the challenges being faced by people with disability. This amongst many other things Mr. President has come to commission in Nasrallah State which includes a comprehensive primary health care center, fire service, e-library which is the in thing now for uh, in ex expanding reading culture and above all uh, the network of roads that uh, the, the state has constructed. So this visit to us is something that we will remember for a long time to come 
by virtue of the benefits it would have not only to the people of Nassau State, but Nigeria as a whole. Well, just tell me uh, something. The, uh, the school was described as a comprehensive uh, school for, you know, sp special needs. Uh, it's, that's too um, broad spectrum. Is it special? Is it just like maybe three, three areas, four areas, or specifically? Thank you very much. Uh, that's why we call it comprehensive special school, because it conceives of all the visible challenges people with disability are facing, particularly the ones that become so common, so multiple in our societies. Uh, those with vision impairment uh, that are called blind, hard of hearing, mm -hmm. diff which is deafness, physical disability, which is uh, to do with people cripple uh, the cripples yes and also yes. those with down syndrome of what or what is being called as uh, uh, autism this uh, cerebral palsy yes yes this category of children find it difficult to have opportunities to fit in to, to excel. yes with normal so our school being comprehensive is catering for the blind the deaf the physically challenged and those with autism and by that I mean we want to try to see how we can change the fate of people with disability. For those that are adults, it's unfortunate. Mm. Uh, government over time did not have this awareness to create an opportunity for people with disability to excel. But with us in this dispensation, we are thinking uh, uh, from starting from the basics, giving those children at their infancy, in their cognitive stage, in life, certain opportunities to further the education, to create awareness in them so that they will be able to attain certain literacy, certain amount of education that will be worthwhile, not only to themselves, but uh, to the society at large. Laudable, laudable, laudable ideals. Then after this time, what next? We enter election year soon. Is that going to be the end for for new projects to be commissioned and inaugurated? What next? Thank you very much. I, I think I would still want to emphasize on the value and importance of this school, this ability, uh, a comprehensive school. Uh, reason being, this category of people are suffering tremendous amount of discrimination. And unless and until we get an institution that takes care of them and also enact the laws that gives them the leverage to be like other normal citizens, I think we shall have a long way to go in uh, providing inclusive governance. So I am thinking particularly about the sustainability of this school. Uh, years after I must have left office, we have started planning ways and means uh, such that even if a new governor that comes does not have the passion to progress with this initiative, the school can stand on its own. Thank you so much, thank Governor you. Tanko Al Makura of Nasarawa State. Thank you for coming to our studios. We'll have to leave it there today. I'm sure you'll come back another time to tell us what more you've done for the state. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Moving too. on now. We go on to our first commercial break of the day. When we return, the news will continue. You're welcome back. In a bid to sustain the momentum of the economic recovery and growth plan implementation, the federal government has instituted focus labs in three selected areas of the plan to accelerate involvement and job creation. Inaugurating the core team of the Focus Labs, Vice President Yemi Oshimbajil reaffirmed government's commitment to partner with the private sector to achieve set targets. State House correspondent Jide Unifade tells us more. The Focus Laboratories are being conducted in the areas of agriculture and transportation, manufacturing and processing, and power and gas supply. 
The core teams are to focus on seeking new investment for critical projects, which would in turn create jobs and resolve complex interagency problems that inhibit private sector investment. As the Vice President notes, the aim is to increase private sector participation. We are really committed to this principle, and I want all of those of us who will be participating in these labs to see this as central. We want to listen to what the investors are saying. We want to listen to what the private sector is saying. I want to see in what ways we can bend over backwards to accommodate what they're saying so that we can achieve our objectives. The Central Standing Committee has nine ministers who are to steer the labs and drive the necessary collaboration with the private sector. While the core teams be inaugurated, comprise of senior public officials who will provide the sector expertise required to successfully run the three labs. The labs will be executed in three phases. The pre-lab, which will run from January 15th to March 4th, 2018. The main lab from March 5th to April 15th. And the post-lab, which will run from April 16th to May 13th, 2018. So it is now my uh, special privilege to formally inaugurate the core working group of the ERGP focus labs. First, it was the introduction of the micro, small and medium enterprises clinics that paved the way for the ease of doing business in the country. And now it is the introduction of focus laboratories that will give details to every aspect that will provide a smooth implementation to the economic recovery and growth plan of government. From the State House Conference Center, it's Jide Onifadi, NT News. Nigeria is targeting 15 million jobs by the year 2020 through the lifespan of the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan, ERGP, as Focus Lab is set to take off in March. Let's join Leah Katung Babatunde for details on what this means and how government intends to achieve this. Two years into the implementation of the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan, ERGP, government has continued to take steps to consolidate on the gains. Key execution priorities include stabilizing the macroeconomic environment, achieving agriculture and food security, improve transport infrastructure, ensure energy sufficiency in power and petroleum products, as well as drive industrialization focusing on SMEs. This time, it will be driven through the Focus Labs, a collaboration with Malaysian consultants to be executed in three phases, pre-lab, main lab, and post-lab, with three main objectives, new investments for critical projects, job creation, and resolution of complex interagency problems that inhibit private sector investment. Over the life of the plan, 15 million jobs. Um, so, but it's not just from these areas, from all the activities that we will be stimulating. The labs aim at bringing together relevant stakeholders in the public and private sectors into weeks of intensive working sessions to brainstorm on practical steps to overcome and identify challenges in the implementation of the ERGP. The more we do with the SMEs, the more we do with industry, the more we do with all the various players, the easier it is to attract investments and the easier the work of the labs will be. Nine ministries are priority in this drive and the first core working groups include agriculture and transport, manufacturing and processing, as well as power and gas supply. The ERGP has a target of growing GDP by 7%, growing power generation to 10 gigawatts and joining the League of Top 100 Economies in the ease of doing business ranking by the year 2020. In Abuja, I'm Leka Tungbaba today, NTA News. Nigerians across professional fields and experts in procurement processes have described the signing of Executive Order 5 for planning and execution of projects by President Buhari as the best thing to happen in recent times, especially to Nigeria's economic history. In this special report, correspondent Abdullahi Garba Burning Kubu Kudu examines the new develop examines this development and its impact on local content development. 
This is the fifth executive order under Buhari administration, all targeted at changing the old order and launching onto the path of sustainable development. The fifth order is aimed at promoting Nigerian content in contracts, science and technology, and engineering generally by way of giving preference to indigenous professionals. This is a welcome development as corroborated by development economists who say it will save cost, ensure internal security, and attract Nigerians in diaspora to come back home. The best good news I've ever had in this government. So give that joy to a black man that tomorrow if we are building Nigeria, Nigeria becomes a mega economy. I say it was built by Nigerians. But it reduces the cost of doing business in Nigeria. A long way in improving the patronage of not only local contractors and uh, local skills, particularly in engineering and science and technology. But most importantly, it will enhance the use of local materials that are produced in Nigeria that will go a long way in improving the quality of life of our citizens. Professionals in the field of engineering and procurement see the signing of the executive order as a challenge to demonstrate the ability to build Nigeria. With this, a lot of challenge has been put on the shoulders of engineers by this executive order, which means our engineers should be able to organize themselves like they do in China, where you have in Guangzhou, in Hanzhou. New entrants into the engineering profession are taught on how to be self-employed in terms of having the capacity to think about a product you can develop. And when you develop that, then if it passes the national standard, then the government will support you to make it have the possibility of being passed for international standard. At the moment, there are more than 30,000 registered local engineers in Nigeria. In Abuja, Abdullahi Gerba Pernokudu, NTA News. So, welcome to NTA Network News tonight. We're bringing the President of the Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria, Koren Kashim Ali. Kashim Ali, thank you for joining us tonight. That was uh, wonderful news that you all heard today, and I'm sure you're all doing hoops over it. Mm -hmm. But um, our first question tonight is, uh, the order consists of science, engineering, and technology components. Now, how far-reaching will this be for your group? Thank you very much. Let me also start by welcoming you to NTA Studio after a long while. <laughs> I'm, I'm delighted to be guest to a legend. Wow. Thank now, you. Actually, like you said, everybody is excited. We looked forward to this and we're happy it came. And when it came, it's like uh, we've had a second independence of our country. Because uh, political independence without any base in terms of science, engineering and technology is virtually ineffective. Because uh, countries that have had it, this second independence have grown. But we need even beyond this second independence, a third independence. Because this particular has uh, about five, 55 components. But most critical of it that I'll take, at least for engineers, is that in the consulting, consultants in Nigeria, young consultants have been slaves to foreigners. But today, with this design of the executive order, they have been liberated. Because where there's a joint venture now between foreign and Nigerian partners, the Nigerian firm will lead. That is critical. That is how it is done in other places. So that's going to be wonderful so for local is, content. It's very wonderful. But the third one that we want, the third event, is that look, there's an agency, there's what we call the Nigerian Agency for Science and Engineering Infrastructure. It came about in the 90s, early 90s. The so called developing countries, now, but they're really looking developed, like the Asian Tigers, use that platform to jump from their third world uh, situation to wherever they are today. Nigeria joined them at that time to create an agency called NASENI. Russia, uh, sorry, uh, Korea, Malaysia, Indonesia all did the same thing, but they operationalized their own. Ours has still not been operationalized. In the meantime, these fellows there are doing a great deal of work. For instance, today if you are going to Kefi on, on that river, okay, you see a small village there that is powered by a mini turbine manufactured in country by uh, engineers in Naseni. They have manufactured also, uh, solar energy panels that are not being utilized. 
Nobody, the government is not buying from them. No government is not saying can anybody to buy. They have they, they little bulbs, electric bulbs, that are not uh, uh, LED, LED. And but the important thing about it that is very, uh, they are very good for the poor people because if those bulbs should drop, they won't break. They use uh, an uh, amalgam of uh, fiber product that will make, make it not break. But even at 20 watt, it's as bright or brighter than 60 watt bulb that is in the market, but nobody is touching. So we need that thought also revolution or independence to add to well, it. The, uh, but well, for this also, we are most grateful and we are quite excited. Well, now that he's done that, I, I, uh, we are all now looking at Koren to uh, maybe develop some kind of processes and guidelines for building local capacity to fill in this gas. Because you, you tell, if you're going to say that local content has got to lead I believe that you would have to push. Corin, are you? have you got any plans to do that? Yeah, to we, strengthen the, the Nigerian is, capacity? We started even from the university. Because now we have refined the BMAS for the university for engineering programs to be in tandem with the world uh, best. We did that with, in collaboration with the UNESCO. And we collaborated with other countries within Asia and uh, the North America and even the South America and, and Europe. That's so, good news. So that is going to give us, by June this year, we are going to have a certification Very as good. to where really we stand in the world. Thank but you. But beyond that, we also have enforcement measures now. We are going through a, a reform of our act so that we can have powers more over both our own colleagues and even quacks who decide to take a foray into our profession. Thank you so much, uh, Engineer uh, Kashim Ali, for coming to our studios tonight, and we wish you well. A pleasure. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Now, we are linking up with Ademola Adeoye in Lagos for stories trending there. So, Demola, how are you? Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you, Ruth. It's good to see you uh, on the screen again. Welcome to Lagos. For the continent of Africa to compete favorably with developed economies of the world, the challenges of leadership must be holistically addressed. Resource persons, including former President Olushe Gumabasanjo, at the 15th Leadership Summit, organized by the Center for Values and Leadership in Lagos, identified the gray areas and preferred solutions. Becky Madujemo reports. Former President Olusegun Obasanjo urged African leaders to acquire sound intellectual knowledge on basic micro and macroeconomics. Otherwise, policies will not promote meaningful development. While acknowledging Nigeria's diversity, Chief Obasanjo called on heads of African countries to re-strategize their approach to governance by aligning with bigger economies, adding that existing institutions are yet to provide the catalyst for the much-needed leap forward. Africa, if Nigeria thinks of itself in the world and does not think of the rest of Africa, we will be an oasis in the midst of desert. Keeping with that thought pattern, former Under Secretary General Unido Sierra Leone's Kanda Yomkela raised some dust when he defined Africa's complacency towards economic stability as the Garden of Eden mentality. This stance, he said, is why governments tend to lean towards stronger nations and world institutions for aid and bailouts. People are innovating. We don't celebrate innovation, our own innovation, because somehow we're waiting for somebody. And from my experience in industrialization, no country that industrializes another one. The lecture with the theme, Leadership and Performance in Africa, the challenge of the continent's economic competitiveness, the event rounded off with a discussion session in Lagos. Becky Madujemo, NT News. The Nigeria Customs Service Federal Operations Unit, Zone A, says goods with import duty valued at 1.6 billion naira were intercepted from anti-smuggling activities in the month of January 2018. The controller of the unit, Mohamed Ubahu, disclosed this at a press conference, emphasized that Customs Service will continue to intensify operational modalities to meet the current smuggling tactics. Michael Olaleye has details. 
The seized items include 31 assorted vehicles, 8,400 bags of foreign rice, 835 jerry can of refined vegetable oil, 2,208 pieces of used tires among others. The controller who expressed shock at the mischievous means used by smugglers to achieve their aim said it was irrational for a country like Nigeria with vast production of rice to encourage rice importation, describing the action as injurious to the health of the citizens and detrimental to government's economic recovery plan. We must support, encourage the rice millers association, the individual farmers, so that team Nigerians will also get employment, will have something to do with, with the self feature. Two containers consisting 60 pieces of chest freezers and cartons of Indian whiskey were also seized for forced declaration. Comptroller Uba said payment of customs duty should not be an excuse for deliberate neglect of due process. If it is short payment, you're supposed to pay, for instance, 1 million and you decided to pay 950, we will collect that 50,000 for the government. The government cannot afford to lose one couple. The 10 bags of Indian M confiscated by the customs will be handed over to the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency in Lagos, Michael Olaleye, NTA News. You are still watching NTA Network News. We now take a break for some messages. The news continues shortly. Stay with us. Welcome back to Abuja. Nigeria welcomes new set of portfolio investors interested in equities and currencies as a ripple effect of global fall in stocks wane. Business News is next with Amina Najim. Welcome to Business News. I am Amina Najim. Recent steps taken by the federal government in reflating the economy has continued to instill investor confidence. The Minister of Finance, Mrs. Kemi Adewoshun, while playing host to a team of global investors led by a former Minister of Finance, Shamshuddin Usman, said Nigeria is taking necessary steps to reduce reliance on oil as seen in the reduction in the benchmark in the budget and deliberate efforts to address hindrances to investment in other sectors of the economy. This is not speculative money, it's not hot money, it's money that recognises that Nigeria finally has a chance of getting things right and I think that's what investors are responding to. But the reserves are up um, and I think there's a lot of optimism in the markets mm. about Nigeria. Mm. The team is on a fact-finding mission and have been meeting with relevant bodies to key into attractive areas. The U.S. Agency for International Development, USAID, has announced an 89 million U.S. dollars in additional development assistance to Nigeria to continue its support for development goals outlined in a development objective assistance agreement. Nearly half of the new funding, about 44 million, will support HIV-AIDS relief. The new funding brings the total U.S. government assistance provided under the five-year assistance agreement to 880.5 million U.S. dollars. The Nigerian Stock Exchange closed shop recording marginal losses as major global stocks bleed. The OSHA index lost 0.87% while market capitalization closed at 15.745 trillion naira. Lesaku Assurance, FCMB and Skybank PLC were the toast of investors. Prestige Assurance and Caverton Offshore led the gainers while consolidated Hallmark, Skybank and Transcorp led the losers. Instead of sinking further, the Dow Jones is now up 350 points or 1.4%. That means leading shares have recovered around a third of Monday's tumble. Stocks around the world crashed following reports of traders' worry about future interest rate rises. U.S. job data lit the fire at the end of last week with higher than expected wage increases prompting inflationary concerns. The fall was recorded in European and Asia as well. And that is business news. The news continues shortly. Good evening. The Senate has resolved to urge the Ministry of Health 
to promote and advertise the no sale of tobacco to minors signage. This follows a motion on the need to immediately ban tobacco companies from targeting school children in Nigeria. National Assembly correspondent Dennis Adegunloye reports. The motion, sponsored by Senator Oluremi Tinubu and others, was based on the worrying trend that tobacco companies deliberately position adverts within 100 meters of schools to entice children and youths into early interest and use of tobacco. Tobacco consumption has been associated with lung cancer. Children are very gullible. They can adapt, they can adopt anything they see. The moment they are able to introduce tobacco smoking to these young people, then their clients or their customers will increase. We have also a responsibility to call the attention of the police or law enforcement agencies where these laws are flouted. A motion on the socio-economic importance of rural roads moved by Senator Chukuka Utazi, representing Enugu North, was also adopted. Two House bills for concurrence, the National Climate Change Bill 2018 and establishment of the National Council on Climate Change, as well as the Chartered Institute of Financial and Investment Analysts of Nigeria Establishment Bill 2018, were passed. The Ad Hoc Committee on the Investigation of Allegations of Corruption Against NNPC Trading Limited heard from the Group Managing Director of the NNPC on the matter. The allegations of huge contracts have been awarded up to 25 billion has been proven to be false. Special Advisor to the President on Social Protection Plan, Mariam Uwais and other agencies defended their 2017 budget performances before the Committee on Poverty Alleviation and Social Welfare. If you want us to have a smooth running of this scheme, you have to work with you on the same page. It says that each and every federated part of the Nigerian state must be sense of blending, and they are here to ensure that what is meant for that people should under the most accounts of that people. Further deliberations were held behind closed doors from the National Assembly Dennis at Dignoy NTA News. Thousands of members of the Buhari support group belonging to the Forum on Non-Governmental Organizations in Nigeria has, have kick-started a nationwide rally in support of the success, successes of the administration of Muhammad Buhari. The group is also calling on President Buhari to answer the call of well-meaning individuals, groups and corporate organizations and seek re-election so as to sustain the good work he's doing for the country. Salihu Abdullahi has that report. This is a struggle everyone here has to endure so as to get branded as the Unity Fountain became alive with Buhari supporters. 29-year-old Amina Ramadan is from Wasa IDP camp in Abuja. She's among many nursing mothers who endure this struggle to get a branded cap for herself. I like Baba too much. I'm very, very happy. The scorching sun could not stop members of the over 200 different groups from across the country here to celebrate and appreciate the present administration in its efforts of rebuilding the nation and transforming people's lives since it took the mantle of leadership in 2015. Everybody know that there are efforts on the part who are no longer benefiting from the new order which is not business as usual, to try to paint the Buhari administration in a demonic picture. We can no longer take it. President Muhammad Buhari is a gift to Nigeria. Go down to the southeast zone, the major roads that we have forgotten and abandoned for years, President Buhari has been able to fix them. I am ready to sacrifice my resources on behalf of this gentleman. Conveners of the rally urged participants to remain committed and resolute in the struggle to galvanize support for the president, who they say has performed maximally towards boosting the nation's revenue generation base, as well as championing the diversification drive. In Abuja, Salihu Abdullahi, NTA News. Now for more stories, we're going to Maiduguri, where Jimmy Yusuf is standing by. Thank you, Ruth. It's good to see you, and you're welcome to me, Dugri. Over 300 youths in Borno State have been employed to carry out the electrification of Kaliri community 
in MAFA local governments of the state, partly funded by the United Nations Development Program in collaboration with Japanese government. This followed the release of counterpart funding by Bono State government to ensure the internally displaced return to their community. Communities, Nemula Garba reports. Kaleri community, a densely populated area of over 10,000 inhabitants situated in Mafa local government, was among the military liberated areas of Borno State. Inspecting the electrification project with the officials of the UNDP and Japanese government, Borno State Commissioner for Reconstruction, Rehabilitation and Resettlement, Professor Babagana Umara Zulum said, the electrification of Kaleri community is one of the projects being executed by the ministry with the support of the Japanese government. He said over 300 youths have been engaged in the project and thanked the donors for their assistance and called for more in that direction. Professor Babagana Umara Zulum said the Japanese government has also co-funded the current reconstruction of Guam community in the local government, which will also be electrified by the youths engaged as soon as it is completed. Impressed with the Japanese UNDP project specialist Yoshiaki Ungochi and Tatsuya Kimura expressed appreciation for the quality of the job and the zeal of the state government in carrying out the project. In Maiduguri, Maimuna Garba, NTA News. That's it from a degree. Ruth, it's back to you in Abuja. Thank you so much, Jimmy. You're back to, Lake, uh, to Abuja. And coming up after the break, more stories don't go away. Welcome back. Motorists, especially commercial motor drivers who depend on petrol for their livelihood, are crying out for urgent solutions to the recurring scarcity in major cities across the country. Correspondent Lydia Sampson went round some petrol stations and reports that in addition to the frustration of waiting long hours on queues, the motorists are also perplexed as a cause of the inconsistency. As at the time the DPR team arrived, one of the NMPC filling stations along the South Road in Sokoto Metropolis. The we don't get another way to get money past this way now, because now where would they buy to they feed our family? Mundin Amirunle is a commercial motorist and married with three children. Like others in his line of business, the income comes in daily, without which he is not able to put food on the table for his family. His frustration is therefore understandable when he has to spend long productive hours on queue at filling stations hoping to top up his tank. Like him, a cross-section of motorists who spoke to NTA News expressed worries over the fluctuating queues and why it is not abating. Honestly, I don't know. I'm confused. I'm confused. What we are seeing, I don't know what's happening. But what we are seeing now is something that, in fact, no man can tell. If all the stations in the city are wet, are supplied with product, we won't have this crisis. NTA News investigation also reveals that price differential between Nigeria and her neighboring countries remain an attracting influence for siphoning petrol. What is the state of supply? Is there any shortfall? The Petroleum Products Marketing Company, a downstream subsidiary of the NMPC, says on average the corporation receives two petrol laden ships per day. The presidency as well as the Senate have told us to do what it takes to make sure that these queues disappear. What did we do? We made sure that in addition to having one cargo a day, we said that should be duplicated. He appealed. And now it's time for sports. So, Nigerian basketball stakeholders over the leadership tussle in the Federation, the three man FIBA delegation to Nigeria Tuesday met with one of the factions led by Tijani Umar. Kayode Adeniyi reports that a three hour meeting which was held behind closed door is to find a amicable solution to the current crisis. We have discussed extensively on the issues concerning the Nigeria Basketball Federation. And as you know, the fact-finding delegation is actually trying to find the facts. The delegation is expected to meet MPBF President Musa Kida and his board in Lagos Wednesday. Wife of the President Aisha Buhari will on Thursday perform the ceremonial tee-off for this year's Ladies Open Golf Tournament at the IVB International Golf and Country Club Abuja, 
Over 200 Nigerian lady golfers and 52 foreign players from 10 countries have registered to participate in the 20th edition to be organized by the ladies section of the club. Directors of sports in Nigeria have agreed to shift the date of the first under-18 National Grassroots Sports Festival, which is scheduled to hold at the National Stadium Abuja next month. At a meeting in Abuja, the organizer, Angelo Peter Elosia, said the focus of the festival is to harness the untapped talents who are yearning to represent the country. The Nigeria veteran handball team is to depart the country Wednesday ahead of the Made in West African handball built for Lome, Togo, February 9-11. The championship, which is also known as the Babuza Cup, aims at strengthening relationship between former handball players across the South region as well as to help promote the game in Africa. With sports update, Kenem Ima Aburike, NTA News. And with that, we end the news broadcast for tonight. Thanks for joining us. Bye now.